both synapsing on that same lower motor neuron. So there are two ways of activating that same lower motor neuron, and therefore, same way of activating all the muscles controlled by that motor neuron. So remember that term lesion when I talked about injuries to any sort of tissue organ? Now let's talk about nervous lesions. I know this is a lot to absorb at first, but don't worry, this is why I'm putting up the, the, the recording up later. So what happens if you have lesions to these neurons? Well, if you have a lesion to a lower motor neuron, what happens? Well, if you cut off the signal to that skeletal muscle, can you actually contract that skeletal muscle? Nope, you don't get any contraction whatsoever. If you're, that lower motor neuron is damaged, you don't have anything to trigger the release of acetylcholine. If you don't have anything to trigger the release of acetylcholine, you don't get all that action potentials along the skeletal muscle fibers. You don't get the calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. You don't get muscle contraction. So if you have a lesion to a lower motor neuron, it doesn't matter whether you want it to contract or not. That is going to pretty much paralyze that skeletal muscle that was part of the that motor unit controlled by these lower motor neurons. So if you what if you do a reflex test? Say that lower motor neuron was controlling the muscles that quadriceps that actually does the patellar reflex. Well, you can hit it all you want. You can tell the student, hey, try to extend your knee. And you can try to use a reflex hammer all you want to try to force them to extend their knee. They're not going to be able to because, again, if there's nothing to cause that acetylcholine signal, there's not going to be any muscle contraction. So this is what we call areflexia. No reflexes because, again, nothing can trigger that lower motor neuron that's damaged. Nothing can cause that acetylcholine you need to actually cause that contraction. And, or sometimes if it's incomplete lesion or a minor lesion that affects the function of the lower motor neuron, or say there are other muscles that can't, some of these other, besides this one, like there are other motor neurons that control that same muscle group, maybe they will get reflex, but it'll be much more dampened and subtle compared to a normal reflex. Now, we talked about lower motor neuron lesions. What about upper motor neuron lesions? And this is where it gets fascinating. So upper motor neuron lesions. So what happens is that, okay, now they can't tell themselves to actually contract that muscle and cause that movement. But when you have an upper motor neuron lesion, notice that these extra pyramidal pathways are still intact. And remember how I say those extra pyramidal pathways, these are involuntary and they're often involved in reflexes. So what happens is that, can they still have reflexes? Well, they can't, yes, they still have reflexes because these pathways are still intact. They just can't control it, but they still have the reflexes intact. So the interesting thing is that they experience hyperreflexia. And remember when I talked initially about reflexes, how when you have the yendrosic maneuver and you kind of distract the central nervous system and kind of occupy it? Well, it's kind of like doing that. What happens is that if you take the central nervous system out of the equation, it can't really dampen the effects of reflexes on the, the lower motor neuron. Or was it? Yeah, so that's why you get the hyperreflexia. Because, like, you can be, or if you want to be, a, please don't do this to your physician or PA or health prof professionals. I mean, if they're trying to do a reflex test on you and trying to do the patellar reflex, if you can, you can will your quadriceps to not contract in response to that. And you can kind of mess up that reflex. But what we're doing is taking that voluntary control out of the equation. Now it's all reflexes. Now it's all involuntary. So here's what a normal patellar reflex looks like. So that was pretty normal, right? Now let's see a hyperreflexia example. Yeah, so notice that it's like it, he had a bigger kick and also a lot of wobbling as well. So this is the example of that hyperreflexia. And I think, believe this patient had a stroke to the left side of their body. That's why they had that hyperreflexia. They had damage to those lower, I mean, upper motor neurons. Therefore, that's why they don't have a dampening of that reflex. All right, so we already covered that. Now, Babinski reflex. Hey, remember that other reflex? Say you're having trouble with the patellar reflex. So these are often, now, what causes the Babinski reflex? Well, due to some sort of lesion causing abnormal reflexes. 
and it's usually a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion. So again, remember that Babinski, if the toes curl upward, it's normal in infants, but in adults, it's pathological. So if this is like another thing you can do to a patient to see if they might have an upper motor neuron lesion.